All right, Shalom. I want to start off by giving all praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rakakodash. Yahweh is the true, holy, and powerful name of the Heavenly Father, Bahashem meaning in the name. And Yahweh Shai is the true, holy, and powerful name of His only begotten Son, who is the Savior of the nation of Israel, starting off with the elect. Within the nation of Israel, and Israel consists of you so called Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Americans, as well as you Israelite foreigners scattered abroad that may look like the nations where you've been scattered to, but are Israelites. And I also would like to give double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone who rule well. Peace and salutations to the whole for the leg, pushing out this word in all sincerity and the truth. All right, this is the brother you call from the GMS branch out in uh, Des Moines, Iowa, coming back at you with another lesson inspired by the Holy Spirit, Habakakurash. And um, this lesson is going to be based off of uh, what you see on the screen, all right, uh, from RT America entitled Breaking. Trump says Iran planning sneak attack on U.S. troops. All right, so <laughs> your boy Donald, Donald Trump is uh, at it again. All right, so we know at the beginning of the year, um, uh, he, uh, sanctioned to murder, all right, uh, Soleimani, uh, Soleimani, which was, uh, pretty much the top general in Iran, all right, you can consider him being, like, the second in command, all right, uh, somewhat to an equivalent of a vice president, all right, and he was over the military, if I'm not mistaken, but, um, uh, he, uh, planned that attack off of a false pretense, uh, with, with really no information to, uh, put him to death, all right, to bring forth, uh, his plans. All right. And let me just go over here to an article really quick. I'm not going to read any of these, but um, so uh, on this headline here, I'll just read a few of them. It says um, Soleimani was planning specific attacks from multiple countries, according to source. Uh, Trump claims uh, Soleimani was planning to blow up U.S. embassy. <laughs> all right. Jumping down here. Uh, Pentagon says uh, Iranian commander Soleimani was developing plans to attack Americans. All right. So when they when they murdered this guy. All right. Uh, Trump, uh, pretty much the national community. All right. They all everybody, all these heathens. All right. Esau has been found out. All right. They understand that this devil is a devil. All right. They know that um, there was no no um, justifiable reason to kill Soleimani. And these nations uh, know that. But here it is. Here he goes again, accusing um, Iran of planning various attacks. So this is to show you that um, just imagine. All right. Let's say that, you know, they have a false flag attack. All right. Now we're going to play this video, but let's say that they have a false flag attack in the midst of all that's going on with the coronavirus here. All right. Let's say that they say some terrorists, they they blow up something. You already have the military um, mobilized in major cities. All right. They're already in place. And if they were to actually do a false flag terrorist attack here in the states with all this going on, it would only uh, be the perfect. It would it would be the perfect storm. All right, it would be the uh, perfect pretense um, to further take away uh, your rights and to further uh, push um, more of a uh, um, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, pretty much push uh, these armies and the National Guard and so on and so forth to have more uh, drastic and more uh, draconian measures. All right. That's that's a good term. Draconian uh, measures. All right. So where these troops, because of the scare of terrorists and the scare of this virus. All right. If they were to do any any extreme measures that they would do, it would be under the pretext. We need to protect our people at all costs from the virus, from terrorists. We need to do everything. So when these troops start coming in, all right, people are going to. Uh, people are going to uh, uh, pretty much they're going to be uh, willing. All right. They're going to be willing. Yeah, we need to protect ourselves and so on and so forth. Now, of course, you're going to have uprisings and uh, against the military and the government and so on and so forth. But that but at the end of the day, our right, people want to feel uh, secure. All right. They're going to be begging all right, the, the government for vaccinations, begging the government to protect them from terrorists and so on and so forth. All right. But let's go ahead and jump into this. All right. And then we'll get into some World War Three uh, prophecies, man. And so lucky if I was uh, over speaking, you know, breaking news. Uh, President Trump is now saying that Iran is planning a sneak attack on U.S. Uh, troops uh, in Iraq. Uh, upon information and belief, Iran or its proxies are planning a sneak attack on U.S. troops or assets. And if this happens, says the president, Iran will pay a very heavy price indeed. And uh, he's making this very important global announcement on Twitter, by the way. Uh, all right. Joining us now, former British MP and international analyst uh, for us, uh, George Galloway, who's uh, good enough to uh, join us. Uh, I guess, you know, 
It's funny, George. Uh, I had planned to start this conversation with you about something you and I had been talking about this week, and that is uh, countries maybe growing closer together because of the coronavirus. But this bulletin just arrived from the President of the United States on something he tweeted. What sayeth you to this? Well, I suspect that this is as inaccurate as previous pronouncements about Iran in the case of the assassination of the Iranian general, for example. The whole world now knows that that was based on absolutely false information. I'd be astounded if Iran... Right, and just to pause it there, all right, and um, that lets you know once again that this devil is being revealed, all right? For who he is now he can't just come out and just say certain things or do certain things and people just believe him anymore okay this is the book of uh second thessalonians chapter two and uh verse eight it says um and then shall that wicked be revealed whom the lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming so we're in those days where the wicked is being revealed and the wicked pursuant to malachi one and four is the nation of edom all right. So they are the wicked of the Bible. That is the role that the Heavenly Father has uh, um, sanctioned them to play throughout the planet Earth. All right. It says, uh, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. All right. So this devil is a deceiver. All right. And that's what he's done throughout uh, throughout his ages. And, and now these nations are uh, recognizing that. Verse 10. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness. Uh, and them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. All right. And that's all that I want to get on that. As a matter of fact, let me grab one more. Um, Nahum, is it the third chapter? Let's see. All right, this is Nahum chapter three and verse five. It says, behold, I'm against thee, saith the Lord, Yahweh of hosts, and I will discover thy skirts upon thy face. All right, so if you lift up a woman's skirt and it's all the way up to her face, that means that you're seeing all her goodies. All right, you're seeing all her filth um, in this case, all right, because Babylon is filthy, man. All right, it's a, a, a Babylon, the, the mother of harlots. All right, this place is filthy, but Esau Edom is associated with Babylon and their filth is being discovered, man. All right. It says, uh, I will discover thy skirts upon thy face and I will show the nations thy nakedness and the kingdoms thy shame. All right. And that's what's been happening, man. These nations now see the wickedness and and and, and the uh, the devilish waves, <laughs> the waves of uh, Esau Edom. And I will cast abominable filth upon thee and make thee vile and will set thee as a gazing stock. All right. So I just wanted to grab that point just uh, on what he had mentioned there. Run in the throes of the pandemic biting so hard into their population would take any such risk. Uh, so I'm sorry that uh, Donald Trump spoiled the atmosphere, which was coming along, as you said, really very well. Uh, America is... All right, uh, that's all I'll get on that. All right, so as he was saying at the end of... Um at the end of the clip that I played, he was pretty much saying like this was a time where nations were coming together. All right, you had even Russia; they were uh, they sent uh, medical uh, medical care here to the states. All right, you've had um, I think it was like China. I don't know if you mentioned it right there. I couldn't really hear uh, that well, but um, I think it was China that's helping out Europe and so on and so forth. So because of this virus, all right, this being a global pandemic, it seemed as if nations were coming together to help one another out. And then in the midst of all this, <laughs> you got Trump. <laughs> you got Trump, all right, <laughs> messing it all up. Here it is, we're coming together and he wants to falsely accuse Iran, all right, of a, just a, of a scheme, a plot, all right, a, a inclination that they might be planning a sneak attack on U.S. troops. This guy's corny, man. But it's letting you know that, uh, uh, it's showing you how, um, uh, once again, that these uh, these nations are ultimately Esau Edom. They're gonna be the blame of the of the collapse of everything. All right, <laughs> the economy and the destruction of these nations. Man, everybody's gonna be pointing the finger at him for being the issue. All right, so let's go ahead and grab some World War Three prophecies, man, because ultimately, um, war with Iran is not just war with Iran. All right, war with Iran is war with Russia and all of its allies, and it's a war that won't be won. By these devils, man. All right. By these Americans. All right. Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai is ultimately going to uh, 
in this war, all right? He's going to win, all right? This World War III, man, according to the prophecy, all right? So let's go ahead and jump in the book of Revelation, uh, chapter 11 and 14. It says, uh, the second woe was passed, and behold, the third woe cometh quickly, right? So the third woe is speaking of World War III, right? So this is what we are entering into. And like our apostle uh, apostle has been saying, uh, Elder Apostle Tar has been saying before, World War III is, um, uh, uh, is in full swing, so to speak. All right. Uh, this RFID chip mark, uh, market of beasts will be uh, implemented. All right. So we... If we see the, the things uh, coming to pass as far as getting closer to World War III, how much closer is uh, this uh, chip being um, brought into implementation, all right, mandatory throughout the planet Earth now, all right? So we're in some beautiful times, man. There's so much that could happen and so many things that Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai is going to be doing, man. This is definitely the year of prophecy, all right? So let's grab the book of Isaiah, chapter 13. We'll start at the top. It says, the burden of Babylon, which the I which Isaiah, the son of Amos, did see. All right, speaking of the daughter of Babylon here in America. Lift ye up a banner upon the high mountain, exalt the voice unto them. Shake the hand that they may go into the gates of the nobles. And that's what the prophets has been doing, all right? The prophets have been prophesying, all right, uh, cursing this devil out when you're shaking the hand. That's you telling somebody off, man. All right, and that's what we've been doing through the spirit and power of Yahweh, man. The Lord has been doing it through us. Verse three says, I've commanded my sanctified ones, the sanctified ones is speaking of the elect. All right. In the book of St. John 17, it says, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is true. All right. So we are those sanctified ones. Lord's will. We uh, continue in the truth through the end. It says, I've commanded my sanctified ones. I have also called my mighty ones for mine anger. The mighty ones are speaking of the angels. It says uh, the host of heaven. All right. Even then that rejoice in my highness, the noise of a multitude in the mountains, like of a great people. A tumultuous noise of, of the kingdoms of nations gathered together. And that's what the Lord has been doing. He's been gathering the nations in the valley of uh, Jehoshaphat, all right, which is Yahweh Shapat. All right. And that's over there in the hotbed in the Middle East, man. The Lord has been orchestrating these things, all right, bringing these nations to that area because when they, um, uh, when, um, when the Lord, all right, uh, returns, He's going to destroy all those nations in the valley of uh, Jehoshaphat, man. All right. When the Lord actually physically comes in the clouds with the host of heaven. All right. And you can read that in more detail in second Ezra the 13th chapter. But it says uh, they come from a or Salaki verse four, the, no the noise of a multitude and the mountains like as of a great people, a tumultuous noise of the kingdoms of nations gathered together. The Lord Yahweh of hosts mustered the host of the battle. Right. So he is the one, Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, is controlling, all right, this World War III, all right? He's the one that's allowing, Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai is allowing, all right, Trump to make these uh, moves <laughs> that don't have any, uh, it's not reasonable, all right, should I say, because nobody in their right mind would um, want to forward a nuclear war, man, okay? Because at the end of the day, both sides lose in the nuclear war, but this devil all right, is deceived to think that he can come from the ashes of the destruction and reign upon the planet Earth, man. So he's willing to destroy thousands or thousands, <laughs> millions and billions of people, man. As it tells you in the uh, the Georgia Guidestones, all right, they want to reduce the population to 500, 500 million. Well, it's over 7 billion people, uh, according to what they say, uh, upon the planet Earth, man. 7 billion or tr trillion? I can't, I think it's trillion, but either way, all right, they want to reduce the uh, the population significantly to 500 million, all right, you could just look at the uh, Georgia uh, Guidestones for that, so that's in their plan, but that's actually in the plans of the Lord, all right, in the book of 2nd Ezra, the 8th chapter, it says how the Lord has created this world for many, but the world to come is for few, so the Lord has his own depopulation plan in mind that he's going to be uh, working through bringing in these pestilences, all right, Continually uh, using Esau Edom to bring forth uh, destruction. All right, he is the uh, the 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 sword of the Lord at this time. He is the axe that the Lord is hewing with at this time period. All right, so with various ways, and then ultimately, when Yahweh Shai returns, as it says, the slain of the Lord shall be many. All right, so when the Lord returns with the host of heaven and the chariots, all right, he's gonna be zapping people. All right, via the chariots, laser beams. Once again, second, that's the 13th chapter. All right. And he's going to get busy. The nuclear missiles, they are going to uh, destroy a lot of people. But the Lord is going to do a lot of destroying himself when he returns, man. 
All right. It says uh, they come from a far country from the end of heaven, even the Lord Yahweh and the weapons of his indignation to, just, to destroy the whole land. And that's speaking of the nuclear missiles, man. All right. So let's jump in the book of uh, Ezekiel, the 38th chapter, and we'll end it off. Ezekiel chapter 38. And we'll start at the top. All right. Ezekiel 38 and 1, it says, And the word of the Lord Yahweh came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against God in the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, and prophesy against him. Right? So uh, Gog in the land of Magog, the people originally are uh, those were um, um, areas where uh, Japhet all right, was uh, dwelling at. But in this time period, who's dwelling there now? All right. Russia, the Russians. All right. So this is speaking of, of a prophecy concerning the Russians. All right. They're Gog and Magog. It says, and say, thus saith the Lord, Yahweh power. Uh, behold, I am against thee, O God, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal. So even though the Lord is using the Russians, all right, ultimately, they're still Edomites, man. And the Lord is against them. All right. It says, verse four, and I will turn thee back and put hooks into thy jaws, right? Putting them back in that USSR spirit all right, to where they want to destroy America. OK. And that's the spirit that the Lord is putting them in. Even though they just assisted America by sending aid to help with this uh, virus, they're still going to go into World War III, man. All right. It says, uh, I will turn thee back and put hooks into thy jaws and I will bring thee forth and all thine army, horses and horsemen and all of them clothed with all sorts of armor, even a great company with bucklers and shields, all of them handling swords. All right. Verse five, it says Persia. Right now, Persia is Iran. OK, Persia is Iran. Now, I can't remember the specific date. It might have been in the 1930s, 1920s. All right. That's when um, uh, one of their ministers or somebody that represents them uh, came out and said that they would like to be no longer be called Persians, but called Iran. So up until recently, they were still being called um, the Persians, man. All right. So uh, it says Persia, which is Iran, all right, Ethiopia and Libya with them, all of them with shields and helmet. All right. So now this is the list of Russia's allies. Now, if they're talking about, um, if they're accusing, uh, Iran, all right. Of, um, what do you say? Accusing Iran of, uh, planning sneak attacks and knowing the way that Trump gets down. All right. He'll just go and attack them. And then he'll say that I protected millions of Americans from being destroyed. Well, what is Iran going to do? Iran is going to retaliate. All right. And if Iran t retaliates, then what is America going to do? <laughs> all right. They're going to seem even more justified, more empowered, emboldened, all right, to uh, retaliate against their retaliation. But the point being is that when they do these things, uh, Russia is going to get involved. Their allies are going to get involved. So these moves that they're making with Iran isn't just with Iran. It's with Russia and its allies as well, man, according to the prophecies. So it says uh, Persia, Ethiopia and Libya with them, all of them with shield and helmet. Gomer and all his bands, the house of Togomar of the north quarters and all his bands and many people with thee. Be thou prepared and prepare for thyself, thou and all thy company that are assembled unto thee and be thou a guard unto them. So there it goes right there. According to the prophecy, shoot, if uh, America gets too touchy with Iran, OK, or any of its other allies. All right. Russia is going to get involved. So we see these things, man, right at the door. And I'm going to just end it right there, man. All right, Lord's what I was edifying. I'm going to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakakodash. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Mills, so on rule well. Peace and salutations to the hopeful elect, pushing out this word in all sincerity and the truth. With that, I'm going to say Shalom.